what is the probability that uh, a composite number is wrongly classified as prime? Okay. So meaning um, you have a number n, which you know for sure is a composite, but the algorithm fails to find a witness. Okay. And they, they end up saying that number n is a prime number. That can happen, but let's reason about it in a more structured way. Okay. In order to answer that question, I need to introduce you now to one final theorem. Okay. So let's get started with that now. So um, remember, we declare something um, as a prime after trying many atoms, T atoms. I will explain what T means in a moment. Um, after T atoms, uh, we, if you are not if you are not finding any witness, we say or evidence, we say uh, this number n must be a prime number. Okay, so I want to create a new set and uh, talk about the size of the set. Uh, the set is called bad set. Okay, so a bad is set of all elements in the group G. Okay, such that um, a power n more uh, a power um, n minus one, right, is congruent to um, one mod n. Okay. Okay, where is the A coming from? A is the group element. Okay, A belongs to the group element that we are working with. Okay. So we are collecting all such group elements and we're putting it inside the set called bad. Okay, I'm going to argue that bad itself is a subgroup. Okay, so, so what I'm going to talk about is suppose you have a group G. Okay, for example, Z star N. Here is your group G. G let's call it a... Um, Z star n because that's the group that we have been playing with for for a, for a long time and we can stick with it. G can be Z star n. Okay, n is one. N is a number that we wanted to check whether it's a, a prime number or not. Okay, so we have a group G and we argue that bad is a subset here, right? This is a subset bad, and the subset is actually a subgroup of G. Okay. So how do we prove this set bad is a subgroup of G? Um, first, we need to prove identity exists, okay? Clearly, um, number one, which belongs to the group G is satisfying this property because one power N minus one is, is one. Therefore, we can say one belongs to bad, okay? One is a bad element. It's an element in the set bad, okay? Um, what about closeness property? We need to select two elements, A and B. Let's select A and B, which belongs to bad. That means we know A power N minus one is same as uh, one mod N, okay? And uh, what about B? We can also say B power N minus one is also one mod N. I'm not writing mod N again and again, so we know this. What can you say about AB? We need to show that AB belongs to bad, right? That means we need to show AB power N minus one is also one, which is easy to show because AB power N minus one is nothing but A power N minus one times B power N minus one, right? That's basic property of exponents and multiplication. Okay, that, that is clearly one because we just shown above that each component is one, therefore this is one, okay? Which implies AB is an element in the bad set, okay? So we proved closeness property, okay? If you, if you prove uh, that you have a, uh, a set, in that set, if you multiply any two elements, the answer is part of the set, then your set itself is a subgroup. So um, in the previous segments, uh, we talked about when can a subset be considered as a subgroup, okay? And we argued that if closure is true, then the subset becomes a subgroup, which is true in this case. We proved that we selected two elements A and B, right? Some arbitrary elements A and B from this bad set. And we shown that A times B, whatever multiplication is defined in the group is part of the subgroup again, part of the subset again. Therefore, calling that previous theorem, uh, we can confirm that bad itself is a subgroup, okay? So uh, what we are concluding is that the set of all elements, okay, in the group G that satisfy this property, right, is a subgroup, okay? 
what do we know about the size of a subgroup size of the subgroup right is bounded by size of the group by 2 okay i'm going to make one more assumption right if we assume a bad is a strict subgroup meaning there are elements outside bad then this is true okay otherwise bad can be of size g right um, it cannot be anything in between g by 2 and g because it has to divide the size of the group okay we talked about that also earlier in any case the size of the bad is bounded by g by 2 okay so what we have confirmed now is that there can be now we can go back to the algorithm there can be how many bad witnesses can there be bad witnesses means uh, bad witnesses in this context uh, means that uh, they never satisfy this property okay which means in the end we return the number n as a prime okay we just shown that the set of all a uh, from the group g uh, that will uh, not satisfy this property is at most the size of the group by two okay so uh, what is the size of the group z star n that we are playing with um it's 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 uh, clear that z star n is is nothing but pi of n okay and uh, the number of uh, uh, bad elements can be at most half of the size of the group okay that means the remaining half that's an important point the remaining half of the elements of the group can be a witness for us okay that's an important fact let me go back to the uh, whiteboard again so i made an assumption that there exists a witness okay that's the reason why i said bad is a strict subgroup of g meaning let's assume there exists a witness outside here okay a witness means an element that satisfies the property that a power uh, I say this element, let's call it this x, okay? I call x as a witness if x power um, n minus 1, right, is not equal to 1, okay? Then we say this is a witness because we can use this as a witness to say n is not a, uh, a prime number because we, 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 we talked about it, right? If, if n is a prime number, x power n minus 1 will be 1. But if x power n minus 1 is not equal to 1, then n cannot be a prime number, okay? Let's assume such a witness exists. In that case, uh, because uh, the bad size can be at most half of the group size, which means that how many such x's can we find? How many x's can we find over here that's not present in bad? Uh, we can find at, le um, at least half of the group elements, okay? Let me um, refresh this one more time, okay? The elements that are on the bad are not witnesses because they they kind of uh, lie to us, okay? That the n is a, a, a prime. Um, how many bad elements can there be in a group G? We found out that it, there can be at most G by two um, group elements, okay? Which means there must be at least half of the group that will be used as a Witness for us. Witness is the one that helps us to, sh to show that the number is, um, is a composite number, okay? So, which is a good news. If you know there exists a witness, then you know that there are at least half of the group will, uh, will play a role of a witness, okay? Which is very, very important. Otherwise, the algorithm will not um, work successfully in, in practice, okay? Now let me go back to the algorithm and talk about the parameter t that we never talked about. Okay, what is this t? Um, t is the number of atoms. Okay, now I'll tell you how to choose the t. Now it's the right moment. Okay, so far we uh, we established a mathematical foundation for this 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 little algorithm, very amazing algorithm, but a lot of fascinating mathematics. Okay, uh, what did we uh, um, argue so far? We argue that. Um, the, the algorithm will, will return a number n as a prime only after trying all t trials, right? In all t trials, uh, this particular if statement is, is false, okay? Now let's think about it. What is the probability that the algorithm 
will find a witness first. The algorithm will find a witness half of the time, at least half of the time, because of the mathematical structure that I just talked about. Okay, so in one um, execution, meaning in one run of this for loop, what is the probability that a randomly selected element can be a witness? Assume there is a witness. Okay, that's an important assumption. If there is a witness, half of the group elements uh, can also be a witness for us. Okay, that means there is at least half probability that we find a witness, okay, if there is a witness, all right? Uh, which means that um, we can now think about the probability that there exists no witness. It means uh, the remaining half, okay? We said there's at most half chance that there exists no witness for that particular trial, okay? And we are trying T times, okay? So in each time, Okay, so let me now formalize that. Uh, half probability, at least half probability to find a witness A. That means at most half to fail to find a witness. Okay, and if you now run the algorithm T times and each trial is independent of others because you're selecting the element A uniformly. So we can say half power T is the probability that after T trials, we fail to find a witness. Okay. Now we can think about the value of T that we would like to send in here. Um, T is the parameter the user has to send in, right? N and T are the user inputs. Okay. Whosoever wants to test whether a number N is prime or not. And now they can decide how many times they want the for loop to run. Because uh, if they run the for loop too little, then there is a risk that uh, they wrongly declare the number n as a prime number, even though it may be a composite number. Okay, so this model is telling us the probability that a number will be uh, declared as um, a prime number is half power t. Okay, so suppose your goal is to uh, reduce that probability to the smallest possible value, uh, you know, not running this forever, of course, you want the program to terminate also. So maybe, for example, let's say um, you are fine with um, the probability uh, close to, say, 1 by 2 power 80, which is a really, really, really tiny number, right? Just say the probability that the program will uh, wrongly declare a composite number as a, as a prime number. Suppose you say, I am OK with uh, this bound. Then you can set your t to be 80. That means the program will run 80 times here in the for loop. Try 80 different random numbers, okay? If in all the 80 times, okay, the this particular if statement is uh, failing, then we will declare the number n as a prime number, okay? So let me quickly summarize whatever we discussed. We found out that there are at most half the elements of the group um, that will that will not satisfy this if condition, okay? Okay, which means there are at least half the elements of the group that will satisfy this if condition, okay? Okay, they are, they are two interchangeable statements, all right. Now your goal is to uh, reason about what is the probability that the number will be declared as a prime, okay? A number will be declared as a prime only if this if condition is uh, failing all the time, all the t times it should fail, okay? Okay, what it means to fail is that we, we learned that there's only a, a, at most half probability that a particular number um, is not a witness. So this is this can happen at most half in one trial, right? And if you run it t times, at most one by two power t times, okay? And if you say, I'm, I'm okay with the probability that a number is wrongly declared as a prime, uh, at most one by two power 80, then you can select t to be 80, okay? If you set t to be 80, for example, remember one, one over two over 80, one over two power 80 is such a tiny number. It should be fine even if the uh, T being 50 or 40, you know, it's just such a small number. We are talking about, um, if you, let's assume you said T to be 32, okay? What it means is one in uh, 4 billion um, will, will be wrongly declared, okay? That's the kind of numbers that I'm talking about here. Anyway, with this, we have established a nice mathematical analysis of this algorithm. Um, one important thing to notice is that 
there can be numbers without any witnesses. Okay, I made an argument here that uh, this theorem is only true if we assume bad is a strict sub subgroup of group G. When, when bad is a strict subgroup, what it means? There are elements outside the bad that are actually witnesses. Okay, that means we assume there is at least one witness. Okay, if there exists at least one witness, then there are at least half witnesses. Half of the elements of the group can be witnessed to show that the number n is a composite number. Okay, but uh, uh, there are some numbers called Carmichael numbers. Okay, so I will fool our algorithm. They will always satisfy our algorithm. Okay, in the next segment, I will talk about that. Thank you.